Welcome to the Cute Jeweler channel. So I thought maybe we could start today by taking a look at bullions, coming up with some examples, um, and looking at some common issues, and kind of working through all of those. So let's go ahead and get started. Boolean functions are named after a scientist. I forgot his real first name. I think it's George. George Bool, I think is his name. I may be making that up. But a Boolean is kind of a complicated mathematical equation that the computer can use to kind of calculate what's going to happen between your objects, right? So the computer does all the math for you, but it's important to kind of understand what uh, is happening there. So let's take a look at our Boolean tools. Those can be found under your solid. Um, they can also be found under your standard. There's a little flyout menu here, and this has a lot of our solid tools, which of course starts with our first, uh, the first four are our Boolean tools. When talking about Booleans, our first one here is our Boolean Union tool. So let's take a look at what happens when we use this tool. If I click on Boolean Union, look at my command line, it says what are my objects that I want to like union together. So I'm gonna click on both of my pieces and hit enter. And now what's happened is you can see that those two objects are essentially glued together, right? It's almost like you cut them and glued them together to make one object. So that's our Boolean Union. Next we have our Boolean difference, and this one you wanna pay attention to your command line for. So if I go ahead and click on my Boolean difference tool, you'll see up here in the command line, it, the first thing it says is uh, select your object or polysurface to subtract from. So this is gonna be the object that's gonna remain, but have a piece taken out of it, right? So I'm gonna say I'm gonna cut from this bottom circle here. And you wanna hit enter to move on. The next one is what is your object that you're going to subtract with and here we've got an option in the command line so we can either do delete input equals no which means that our cutting object will remain or we can do delete input equals yes now i tend to do delete input equals no just because when i'm modeling stuff if i need to use that cutter again for something i don't want to have to go back and find it in an old file or go back and like you know recreate that cutter so most of the time i will leave my cutter in the cad file but for now i'm going to say yes that way it disappears and you guys can really see what's happening for this function so now that i've said i'm going to delete my input object i'm going to go ahead and click the thing that's going to remove uh, a piece and hit enter and so now you can see it's almost like that second circle like took a bite out of that first circle. So we're missing that piece. And so that's going to be what a Boolean difference does. Our next Boolean function is Boolean intersect. Now this tool, I love this tool. I feel like people don't use this tool enough because it really can create some really unique shapes when you kind of think about and plan um, what you're going to use from here. And I'll show you at the end some cool ways that you can make a really cool ring really fast with this. So what we can do is we'll click on it first and it says your, to select your first set of objects. So my first set of objects is going to be this first circle. Then I'll hit enter. Then I'm going to click on my second set of objects and it's going to be the second circle and I'll go ahead and hit enter. And you can see what's happened is that the area where they were overlapping, and this is actually the same piece that was removed from this set of circles here, uh, that's what's left over with your Boolean intersection. So you can see you can get some really cool shapes with Boolean intersection if you just take a little bit of time to kind of plan what you're trying to do. Now our last one here is our Boolean split. So I'll go ahead and click on this first and it's again you want to click on your objects in order right so my first set of objects is this just this circle my second set is going to be the second circle and i have delete input equal yes so what happens now is i've got this circle here and it was cut with this circle here but it also left that little piece that was cut so it's like a boolean difference and a boolean intersection 
at the same time. So now you can see if I was gonna do like a piece of inlay, this would be my manufactured object and this would be the piece of like glass that you would do for your inlay. But when I actually print it, it's gonna be this but for a render. Now I've got everything in one place. So that's your Boolean split. Let's talk about some issues that Boolean has. As I mentioned, Boolean is a really, really complicated mathematical equation that the computer is doing for you. I'd say there's probably three things that can cause an issue. So we have our you know, direction of your surface, the seam or singularity of your object, and also if it is self-intersecting. So let's take a look at these and kind of break those down and let's make ourselves some problems. Now let's take a look at the direction of our object. This one I would say is probably the most common reason that your Boolean will fail. So right now, while I've got these two objects, pretty much any of my Boolean functions will work because these are fairly simple objects and they're both closed. So what I mean by that is that if I check what this object is, it's a poly surface, it is a valid poly surface, and it is closed, which means that the computer, this is a watertight piece of geometry on here. And so the computer knows what the outside of this object is. It knows that anything outside of what we see is going to be the outside of the object, and anything on the inside where there might be water, that's going to be the inside of the object. Now where you run into problems is when you have open object. So now I have an open object and at this point it's anybody's best guess what the computer is thinking is the outside of this object. So if I go in and do my boolean difference now, I'm going to say this is my object that's going to cut and this is my cutter. Right now, okay, it's taken and removed that piece that was on the inside of that cylinder. But if I wanted that piece to remain, I can come in and I can check under analyze the direction of my piece. And the best way to think about when you're gonna Boolean difference with an open object is the arrows are pointing at the object that you want to keep. I wanted to keep the inside part here. I could just do a flip and now the arrows are pointing inward. So according to the computer, the outside of my object is on the inside of my object. It's a little bit confusing here. So if you just think, point the arrows at the object that you want to keep, that will be the easiest way. So if I go ahead and hit enter and then do my Boolean difference again. This is my object I'm gonna cut. This is my cutting object. Now you can see that it's actually kept inside. Of my object. All right, and just to make this a little less confusing, I'm actually going to grab a surface and I'm going to take this surface and I'm going to use this to cut my object. Now, right now, I don't know which way is up and which way is down on this. And so if I come up again and grab my analyze direction, check the direction of this, right now the part of this cylinder that I'm going to keep is going to be the upper part of the cylinder. Right, so now if I do a Boolean difference, I know exactly what's gonna happen. This part here is gonna disappear, right? So I'll come up here, Boolean difference, grab that, boom. See, that's the part that disappeared. Now, if I take that same surface and I come over here and try to do that same exact function, it's going to fail because my surface isn't completely cutting through here. So if I come up here, grab my Boolean difference, the computer is telling me right here, but this is why my Boolean failed. It can't figure out what I wanna do at this point of the Boolean. Now, if I had done something different, like Boolean different this with a solid, this is going to work because the computer knows, ah, okay, you wanted to cut that little part there. But if you're ever gonna be cutting with a single surface, you wanna make sure that it is lined up perfectly um, through your object, otherwise it's gonna fail. So let's make this really confusing. This is my object I want to cut, and I want to cut it with this, but it's cutting the cutter, right? And that's because the directions are all crazy on my object. So you want to think about what is the end result that you want to have, right? So if I want my end result to be that this object is going to have a bite taken out of it this way, then I need to make sure that my directions are all going in the right 
um, going the way that I want them to. So if you're ever having the opposite result happen with your booleans, check your direction of your object and I bet you that's probably the reason that it's happening. Next, let's talk about our singularity or coplanarity issue. I've got this nice little object, right? It's got a nice little point on the end. I'm gonna do a polar array. So my objects are technically touching, but if I go in and try to do a Boolean union with these, it's gonna fail. The reason that this happened is because I have a point here. And when these points or even the seams, which are, uh, again, where the kind of the corners are, are lined up with each other, you're not gonna get a chance to Boolean union this together. If the computer is looking at this point as if it is um, kind of an anomaly, it's at this point in the computer's mind goes on forever. And so it can't figure out how to do the calculation to union something like this together. But there's a very simple fix for something like this. You can either scale your object up just a little bit, and now my Boolean union will work. I've got one object there. Or if you don't want to make your object a little bit bigger, you can move it, you can nudge it just a little bit. So I'm gonna nudge this in by 0.01, All right? So I didn't have to move it a lot. 0 0.01 millimeters is like nothing, really. It's, it's barely counts for anything. Um, and so if you just nudge it to just a, just a smidge, you'll get that singularity issue fixed. That's one uh, reason your Booleans could fail and an easy way to fix it. Now let's talk about the self-intersecting um, object. Gorgeous. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, it almost looks like a Celtic knot, right? So this object technically is a closed object. If I check this, it says it is a valid poly surface. It also says it is a closed poly surface. But because I have these areas where the object actually intersects itself, there's areas of the solid that the computer thinks is outside, but it's actually inside. And there's parts where the computer thinks it's inside, but it's actually outside. It's very confusing and can cause a lot of problems. If I try and do a Boolean union on this, it's going to fail. So the computer is really trying. It's looking at these objects. It's like, there's outsides, there's insides. I should be able to figure this out. You can see up here in the command line that my Boolean union failed. Now this particular object, there are several places that caused that issue. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go to ghosted so we can really take a look at this. First place we have the issue is right here where we've got just this one little part that kind of passes through itself. Sometimes your Boolean can still succeed if you've got just one or two of these. When you go to print, it'll cause a problem, but that's a whole nother issue there. But the really big culprits are areas like this. We come in here and ghost. So not only do I have my object kind of coming in on itself, I also have the object folding on itself. Let me go ahead and get this one out of the way here. See? See my object right here, how it is kind of folded over itself. If I go back in and shade it, you can see that there's like a crease here, almost like there's a corner, but this is what's causing the Boolean to fail. Uh, funny enough, I actually discovered this problem was really common when I was teaching. I teach in Southern California and apparently that makes all students want to make like aquatic jewelry. And so I had to make a lot of octopi jewelry or help my students make a lot of octopi jewelry. And every time they would try to make tentacles, they would have this issue. And it took me a little while to kind of figure out what was going on and how to you know fix something like this so if your boolean is failing friend you've got objects like this check for self-intersecting objects there are some kind of complicated ways of fixing these issues for like an issue like this um, a lot of times i would just go in and like just make some arbitrary cuts take this and split it with here and then you can go in and you can actually Boolean union these together. So now this object is no longer uh, is no longer self intersecting. It's now a perfectly uh, valid surface where everything is on the outside. For little areas like 
this, you got to get a little bit more complicated with it. Let me undo that because I broke my history. One way you can do it is if the, uh, if the shape is not super, super important, you can come in and kind of adjust uh, this this bend here so the bend is a little bit more open and completely get rid of that. You can also go in and let's say uh, extract some ISO curves here. This is again one of those reasons that I don't love a, a pipe. I prefer a, a sweep over a pipe but sometimes you just want to use a pipe. So if I do something like this I can come in and I can fix these little corners in my curves. I'll split this with a point. Because, uh, there we go. Cut off the problem. Come back up to my curve tools and do a quick little blend. There we go. Okay, so now I can come in and I can do a two rail sweep. So now I've gotten rid of that issue and my only issue now is that the objects are overlapping each other. But again, that's where you can come in and you can split things up and Boolean union it together and then your whole piece will be able to Boolean union uh, at the end. Cool. So that's kind of some of the Boolean functions that you can see in the computer and also, you know, the three common reasons that those Booleans are going to fail, kind of how you can go in and fix it. Now, I want to show you guys why I love Boolean intersections so much because you can really make some really cool rings very, very fast with that Boolean intersection function. I'm going to do a couple of extrudes. I'm going to make sure when I extrude it that it's a solid. Go, because I'm going to do my Boolean intersection and I want to make sure everything's going to work. And then I'm going to do a polar array, a polar around my origin. Let's try eight of those. All right, if I wanted to go in and adjust it a little bit, I might take this and rotate it so that the spiral is touching itself. And maybe even come in and grab the bottom part of the spiral, taper it in a smidge, maybe scale the whole thing up so that they're still overlapping each other. Start my Boolean intersection, checking my command line, clicking on my first object, hitting enter, and then clicking all of these little spirals and hit enter. There we go. Check that out. With a little tweaking, right, you'd cut this object off before you went into the Boolean intersection. But, I mean, with a couple little tweaks, this is, this is a ring that you could sell immediately. Maybe add some stones on the top, right? And all I did was use an extrude, a taper, and a Boolean intersection. And I got a cool looking ring really quickly. I might actually go in and make this more manufacturable and then sell it. So uh, if you want to buy one of these, <laughs> do you want to buy this at ring, right? Doesn't this kind of look like an at? <laughs> if you'd like to buy this golden at ring, you can at me. So there's our Boolean functions. We looked at Boolean union, Boolean difference, and Boolean intersection, and then Boolean split. We looked at a couple of the common reasons that Booleans would fail. The direction of your surface is wrong or if you've got the singularity issue where you've got everything lined up perfectly at a point or perfectly flat on each other. And we also looked at our self-intersecting objects uh, for an issue. Boom. So those are our Booleans and those are our, our reasons that they fail. So I hope that you guys found that helpful. If you did find that helpful, make sure to hit that like button. It really helps me out. And comment below on what Boolean issues you run into the most. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Rhino content or jewelry content. Want to learn Rhino but don't know where to start? Well, guess what? I offer private Rhino classes. Check the description below on how to contact me for more information. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye! <laughs> Alright, I'm going to save this ring.